Hey guys, it's Miss Joseph, and today I'm going to do your tutorial if you missed our live session. Um, our focus today was on seven steps for reading graphs and charts. We've been focusing on graphs all week, so I'm going to give you seven steps to really be able to analyze the information and understand what the graph or chart is saying. So step number one. You have to figure out the topic of the graph or chart. So a good way to do this is check for the title. Usually the title tells you what kind of information you're about to see. Also, the type of data that's in the graph or chart can give you a clue as well. So looking at this picture here, it's titled Most Popular Hot Dog Condiments. So I'm going to assume that I'm going to see a graph or a chart where it breaks down different toppings for a hot dog and which one is most popular and least popular. By looking at the data collected, 22% cheese, 18% chili, 13 onion, 12 mustard, and 8 ketchup. By looking at that data, I know that those are all toppings of a hot dog. Okay, so that is a great way to figure out the information that you're reading is by looking for the title and the data that's been collected. Step number two is looking for what's being measured, okay? When you have a graph, your X and Y axis will have labels on them, okay? And these two axes will tell you information, whether it's number of days or um, time, meters, centimeters, whatever, all of those different labels that you will find on your X and Y axis will give you a hint as to what is being measured. Are you looking at days? Are you looking at temperature? You have to look at the graph or chart to figure it out. Another way to figure it out is if your graph has categories. Okay, so in this graph down here, it's titled Behavior That Irks Beachgoers. And in it, you see the different categories by the bars. You see littering, loud music, smoking, taking up too much space, and bringing pets. So by looking at those categories, I am now being able to see what's being measured here. And what we're measuring are things that people can't stand about beachgoers. Okay? Step number three, we have to look how the data is being measured. So we've looked at the title, we've now looked at the labels for the X and Y axis or for categories in the graph. Now we have to look at how it's measured. This is gonna be your units. So if we're looking at distance or temperature or money for those categories, then you might see something as far as units go like inches or miles or degrees, dollar amounts. Those are all really good examples of units. So when we look at the graph down here, it says how students pay for college. So we see that this graph is measuring money. So they're using dollars for the unit, okay? So close to $8,752 comes from parent income and savings. $56.92 comes from your grants or scholarships. So we are measuring the amount of money that students are taking to college and paying for college and where that money came from. So was it coming from a scholarship, from borrowing a loan, so on and so forth. And you are measuring this information. We see dollar signs, so we know we're using dollars. Step number four, if there's a key or if there's color coding, that's going to help you be able to read the information better. You have to look and see what does this key represent or does the specific color stand for something. On this graph, it's titled, which requires more trust to share. So would you require more trust to let someone have your house key or more trust to share your Wi-Fi password? You see here that these two different sections are different colors. The house key is in an orange segment and then the yellow stands for the Wi-Fi password. So they use two different colors to represent two different actions, okay? So these are the two things we're comparing to see which one requires the most amount of trust. Step number five says, look to see who published the graph if you found it in a media source. So if you found it online, if you found it in a newspaper, a magazine, always check the source because information can be misleading 
um, if someone has a hidden agenda. And what I mean by that is look at this example down here. This is titled, What People Notice First When They Meet Someone. And it's in the shape of a smile. So obviously the smile comes in at 47% being the most noticeable feature of someone when you meet them, okay? So look at your source down here. Philips Sonicare. That is a brand, especially very popular, for toothbrushes. So of course they're gonna say the smile is the first thing you look at because these people wanna sell their toothbrushes, give everybody beautiful white teeth. So they are enhancing their own product by giving this information, okay? So make sure you always look at the source to figure out if the information does seem logical or if it might seem inflated. Step number six says define any unknown words. If you don't know what something means, you definitely can't understand it, okay? If you don't know what a specific word means, you've gotta look it up. So for example, in this one, Activities we'd put on our bucket list. What in the heck is a bucket list? All right, if you've never heard that phrase before, you've never heard it used before, then you don't really understand what in the world this graph is giving you as far as information goes, okay? So if you didn't know what a bucket list was, figure it out. Oh, a bucket list, there are things that you'd really like to do in your lifetime before you die, right? So 34% say drive a race car, 29% say ride a motorcycle, 28 skydive. So looking at those different options, if you didn't know what a bucket list was, you wouldn't really understand what this graph is showing you. And step number seven, summarize the information in the charter graph in your own words. This can help you really understand the data points using words. So what does the graph essentially tell you? The title of the graph below is percentage of children who eat breakfast daily, according to mothers, okay? So 77% of kids who eat breakfast daily aren't in school yet, so they're below elementary school age. 69% are elementary school aged, 50% are middle school aged, and only 36% of kids who are at the high school level actually eat breakfast. Okay, so even by looking at that, I can see the highest percentage starts at a younger age, and as the child gets older, the percentage of kids those ages that eat breakfast, it decreases. So I can essentially infer from looking at this graph that older children are more likely to skip breakfast, whereas your younger children are more likely to eat breakfast every day. Okay, you can summarize it in just one phrase or sentence. So your activity for today um, has you guys looking at four different little graphs or um, charts. And what you have to do is answer five questions about each graph. They are all very close in the same question. So if you see on these two, the first question is what's the source of the information for this graph? The source is always found at the bottom, okay? And then it asks individual questions based on that specific graph. Be careful, because you might have to do a little math. So like for number three, it says on average, do Americans spend more than or less than $1 a week on candy, okay? So when you look at these years, how are you supposed to figure out how much they spend a week? Like that's impossible. No, it's not. There's 52 weeks in a year. So you take these numbers, that's how many, how much money was spent in a year. You divide it by 52 to get how much they typically spend a week, okay? So some of these you have to do a little bit of math for. Um, the questions over here might ask you what kind of graph it is that you see. It also asks for sources like this one does. Um, gives you true or false questions. And then questions where you have to actually read the graph to be able to answer it, all right? So if you guys are watching this because you missed a live, you can still do your exit ticket linked here, okay? Make sure you still fill out the attendance form if you're watching this so that I can give you credit for being here and getting this information today. If you have any other questions, make sure you reach out to your teacher and we will be more than happy to help you, okay? so. Let us know if you need us.